During the Plague Wars, the Ultramar Sector was flooded by the Plague Legions of Nurgle, and the Imperium of Man struggled to defend themselves from the putrid rot that these Chaos Forces created. And no battle was as deadly as the War of the Flies. And that's what we're going to talk about today in another episode of 40 Facts About the 40k Universe. If you're new to the channel, allow me to introduce myself. I am your host, Gersh1, your guide through the epic conflicts of Warhammer 40k. This entire week, I'm covering Nurgle lore, so if you have any suggestions, please comment down in the comment section below. And if you enjoy the Nurgle lore videos, please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. But with all that said, let's get into 40 facts and lore on the War of the Flies. Amongst the many worlds of Ultramar, those of the three planet systems have been the most bountiful. A trio of agri-worlds, Quintarin, Tarantis, and Masali. Predominantly rocky deserts, the three planets were unusual for agri-worlds in that their endless crop rotations were grown within huge, fortified habdomes. During the period of time known as the Blackness, after the fall of Cadia, the world of Masali was shifted a few degrees off its orbital track by shuddering empiric forces. Whether by chance or some darker design, Masali underwent dramatic climatological change as it was battered by wrenching grav waves and racing superstorms. By the time the planet's trial subsided, Masali's human population had been all but exterminated or at least evacuated. Yet a new world had been created that was even more fertile than before. Gone were the stony expanses and sandblasted wastes, replaced by endless tracts of nutrition-rich soils, across which fell warming sunlight and soft cooling rains. From within the shattered structures of the agridomes came clouds of drifting seeds and spores, the crops continuing to propagate as they always had, until whole continents were carpeted in swaying oceans of bountiful flora. Some believe this was a blessing from the Emperor, others that this was Nurgle's first surpassingly subtle attack upon Masali. Considering what came after, it is hard to contest either theory. The people of Ultramar were quick and industrious to seize this new paradise, and reaping its produce to feed the ongoing war efforts of their empire. Vast agri-fortresses rose amongst the golden macro fields, city-sized strongholds that were settlements, gun-studded castles, and crop processing hubs all in one. Fleets of barges descended into low orbit every single day, greedily devouring the food bales ferried up from the planet below and bearing them away to the waiting worlds of Ultramar. The first sign that anything was wrong came when a strange blight struck the crops of the northern polar steppes. Afflicted plants ripened at an unnatural rate, bloating far beyond what was natural and turning rotten and sour. Finally, the squirming, bruise-colored crops bursted open, spilling clouds of droning flies into the air. Surf laborers reported strange whispers and stirring shadows wherever the clouds of flies droned through the air, and a spree of insanity and violent murder struck the work camps and harvester factorms in the region. The blight spread through the crop oceans like wildfire, and no attempt to stop its advance proved successful. Day by day, the skies over the polar steppes darkened with the smoke of burning crops and the ever-growing swarms of flies. Alarmed by the worsening crisis, and conscious of a wave of nightmares and dark omens sweeping his world, Masali's planetary governor ordered his astropathic choir to send a distress call out into the void. A former soldier who fought on Talisar against the Iron Warriors before the Blackness, Governor Titus, was canny enough to suspect that a far greater horror was on its way. Titus's grim predictions were proven true when on the 77th day of the blight, the vast clouds of flies blanketing the northern sky turned as one and swept together. They formed a single, ranging storm of bloated black bodies and buzzing wings, a cyclonic storm of flies a hundred miles wide. The insect vortex spanned faster and faster, its droning roar carrying across the steps to infect the souls of all who heard it. From within the thundering storm, there rose a dolorous tolling of bells and wailing of damned souls. One by one, warriors of the Death Guard strode from the fly storm, their hulking forms looming through the veil of unreality to stand amidst Masali's rotting fields. War was immediate and savage, with more warriors advancing from the fly swarm vortex by the moment. Whole colonies of traitor legionnaires formed up and trudged out to battle. With them flew bloated demon engines, while at their heels came rusted, lumbering battle tanks and larger, more terrifying war machines. Shambling herds of poxwalkers flowed around them, their malignant moans infecting those who heard them and spreading their spiritual sickness through the Masalian populace with frightening speed. 
Armored regiments of Ultramar's Defense Auxilia mobilized to fight back, roaring out in glorious columns of speeding tanks to stop the invasion before it could truly begin. The macro fields burned and withered as gunfire went back and forth, and tanks turned rich soil to bloody pus licked mud. Explosions flashed across fly blown horizons day and night, but ultimately, the Defense Auxilia could do little to slow the Death Guard advance. One regiment after another was crushed, the corpse of their crews rising soon after, with rictus grins to join the shambling hordes of Poxwalkers. The first Agri Fortress, Diomedes, fell shortly after, its crushing gates smashed down, and its defenders blasted into oblivion by advancing Chaos Space Marines. It seemed as if though nothing could halt the unstoppable march of Mortarion's festering sons. After Diomedes, the Death Guard advance split into three separate forces, led by mighty champions of Nurgle, each flowed toward one of Masali's largest agri-fortresses, drowning settlements and blackening the land like unrushing rivers of corruption. Masali's capital city was the recently rebuilt agri-fortress of Kadropolis, a fortified amalgama of Hive City, Fortress, and Processing Cathedral dedicated to the Emperor and his 17 Saints of the Harvest. It was situated in a natural valley between two low ranges of mountains, and was protected by concentric rings of fortifications, batteries, and auxilia bastions. Here was local governor Titus's palace, the primary command sanctum of Masali's Adeptus Ministorum, and the world's astropathic chambers, to name but a few irreplaceable military assets. If Cadropolis fell, the heart would be torn from Masali's defenses, allowing the Death Guard to overwhelm the world's survivors at will. Charged with crushing the Enclave was Golgoth the Afflictor, Lord of Contingent and Commander of the Tainted Sons Victorium. Golgoth was an unsubtle warrior to say the least, and one who took gruesome pleasure in his work. The Lord of Contingent considered his orders, issued by no less than Mortarion himself, as a glorious opportunity to bring Nurgle's blessings to the benighted corpse worshippers of his world. He would tear open the sterile vessel of Masali's capital city, and fill it to overflowing with Nurgle's blessings. Lord Golgoth's initial attacks were resoundingly successful. Filth-encrusted siege titans blasted the Basilica Fortis into rubble, opening the mouth of the valley to infection and attack. Clouds of plague flies swept across the northern ramparts, blinding and suffocating defense auxilia, while Death Guard siege tanks moved into position and shelled their outer defenses to ruin. A heaving mass of 50,000 poxwalkers surged across the city's outer minefields, overrunning the Bastion Centaurum and the Bastion Angelic before they were finally exterminated by desperate auxilia counterattacks. Meanwhile, plagues and parasites infected the city itself in ever greater numbers, leaving corpses rotting in the streets and priests running mad as they preached the end of all things. Only seven days after his siege began, Lord Golgoth stood poised before Cadropolis' Aquilian gates. The Tainted Sons were poised, ready to advance down Transitway Ego Alpha and break the city wide open. It was at this crucial moment that aid finally arrived. Sweeping into orbit over the beset Agri world came strike cruiser Gilliman's Vengeance. Aboard this fast-moving warship was Captain Sevastus Akron and his strike force of Primera Space Marines. Warriors of the Ultramarine Second Company Akron and his battle brothers had been dispatched as soon as the governor's astropathic distress cries reached McCrag. The fickle tides of the warp had delayed Strike Force Akron until this desperate juncture, yet the scions of Gilliman were superb strategists and decisive warriors. Rather than balk at the desperate situation below, Akron immediately set to analyze where his forces could strike to turn the tides of war. One Death Guard Victorium appeared to be mirrored in a vast tank battle while a second was still digging slime-choked trench work around the outer defenses of the agri-fortress of Mortengol. Clearly, the Victorium poised to overrun Chondropolis presented the most immediate danger to the Imperial war efforts. With this target determined, Captain Akron ordered Gilliman's vengeance into low orbit and readied his forces for an immediate combat drop. Intercessor squads jogged across the ship's embarkment decks, Bolt rifles held at ready as they clambered aboard waiting Storm Raven gunships or strapped into the grav harness of a drop pod. Hellblaster squads gathered and knelt in prayer to the machine spirit of their volatile weapons. Inceptor squads stood patiently as arming servitors machined their heavy jump packs into place under the watchful eyes of a hunched tech priest. 
As each assault specialist pack was affixed and sanctified, they strode into position beneath the maglock deployment rigs that would swing them out into space before firing them into Masali's upper atmosphere. Cocooned within the ceramite and adamantium immensity of Mark X Gravis armor, Captain Akron strode up the rank of his Storm Raven gunship. If he could halt the Death Guard force before Kadropolis and turn back the foe with a glorious victory, then they would buy time for fresh reinforcements to reach the war. For Masali, Fout Akron, the Imperial counterattack began here. And that's the lore to the War of Flies. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any suggestions for Nurgle topics, please let me know what they are in the comment section below. I feel like I'm going to cover Nurgle for all of um, March because it's just I'm so slow at getting things uh, done. Uh, I am working on a couple of uh, demon videos, so expect that soon. Um, but uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. This was Gershwin with One Mind Syndicate signing out. <laughs>